On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we are back with my cheap 2011 Escalade that the price just keeps going up on because every time we get a little bit farther, we spend a little bit more money. Anyway, today, hopefully it runs for real this time. What is going on guys? I am Watch Chairgo, and today, like I said, we are back with my $4,000 Cadillac Escalade and we've got the new engine in it. It's in it, it was ready to go, we stuck the key in it, turned it, and all we got was a click. And we think, from all of my testing on the starter, I mean, I tested everything, that starter seems 100% dead. It seems like a dead short. So, I just got back from O'Reilly's where we picked up a new starter. Here we go. You guys can read that, right? It's an R613399A. That's the starter for this bad boy. And I'm getting really, really good at taking it in and out. Eric took it out once, and I've taken it out three times now. This needs to stop. So after this one, we should be good to go. I'm going to move the uh, little shield off there that keeps the exhaust off the top of the solenoid, stick it on the new one, and slide this thing in. Now, I've got it all ready to go because the transmission lines can be moved right now. I uh, had to loosen up a bracket, and hopefully here in a couple of seconds, we're gonna turn the key again, and it's gonna run. Also, I put the condenser back on because we do need to get the AC uh, at least vacuum down. I want to suck it down and see how it holds, uh, you know, some vacuum overnight. That is our next test to see if the everything in the AC system is good. Obviously, when you take it apart, you really need to test everything after the fact. So we'll put a vacuum on it, let it hold all night long, and see what we come back to. Hopefully, a nice strong vacuum. All right, starter time. Let's go. Woo, that's pretty. Now that we've got it all set up with the heat shield, it's time to shove it in the hole. And this is some of the craziest Tetris you guys have ever seen. I won't be able to show it on camera, but the thing has to go like up, upside down, and then backwards, and then a whole bunch of wiggling, and you'll get it into the bell housing uh, where it belongs. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, there's the new starter it's in. And uh, if you're doing this job, it takes a lot of work to get the starter in, but if you turn the wheel over here and go through the hole and the fender liner there, it'll save you a lot of time hooking up the starter. So, everything is connected except for the power. And that means it's time for a spark. Well, it should be all together. So Eric is gonna do the honors here. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in to yell in case anything goes wrong. Look for leaks. Please start. Uh, oil pressure, did it come up? I have to get, hold on. I have to manually get that out of, uh, out of the So it does show oil pressure, but only on the LCD. So Eric's navigating through the menus here to pull up the oil pressure. And uh, I do not have the coils hooked up yet. I remembered that we wanted to get oil pressure before. But luckily the starter did solve one of our big problems here. It just says one. All right, crank it, see what we get. <laughs> it still says one? So when you go to start, it resets the screen. Ah, all right. See well, we cranked it. I'm gonna hook the coils up and let's party. All right, the coils are hooked up now. Go ahead and crank it again, it should fire. If everything's good. <sighs> Cross your fingers, guys. up again. And it doesn't sound good. We cranked it for about 30 seconds to build oil pressure. And when it finally started, it had great oil pressure. Well, not great. I think it's probably actually low for what this engine's supposed to be. It was 44 PSI. Um, I feel like that's a, it should be closer to 60 cold. And of course there's, there's like a rod knock there. It sounds like a bad rod bearing, a lot of clatter on D cell, all the rod bearing telltales. A few minutes later. Well guys, we have a little bit of an issue here. We got the new engine in. I went and bought a starter. As you saw, we cranked it over until we had oil pressure and then we got it to fire. 
and there's a little bit of an issue here. It runs really, really well, except for the uh, clickety-clackety clatter coming out of the bottom end there. So, unfortunately, this engine that I had very high hopes for obviously was rebuilt in 2019. It's, it's no good. So we have a new engine. Huge thank you to LKQ. They overnighted me a replacement when I sent them a video of it, and I was like, hey, now that we fired the thing up, there's a little bit of a rod knock. And here we have a replacement L9462. Look at that. Everything's exactly the same. It came out of an Escalade, all wheel drive, 62. Eighth digit is the same. So it is the same engine. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is we got a lot of stuff sorted out. Obviously, we needed a starter, we needed wires, we needed a bunch of little things. But we got to take it all the way back apart, swap engines again, and put it all back. So today, I'm going to get as far as I can. We're going to get the coolers out of here. Pull the uh, AC condenser back off, pull the radiator back out, all the oil and transmission cooler lines are connected to that. Those all have to come off. Uh, I'm gonna pull the cooler lines back off the block. We're gonna get as close as we can to getting this engine back out today. And hopefully it's basically all the way out. Now there's a few things we can't do at the moment because we don't have a jack anymore. The jack went <laughs> to Oklahoma. <laughs> Permanent resident. Permanent resident. So uh, we'll have a new jack over here tomorrow. I'll bring mine and uh, we'll get this all sorted out. So today, on to the time lapse. Let's pull this thing back apart. take long at all we got maybe 30 minutes in it and the entire thing is torn back down it goes a lot easier the second time you have to do it all the bolts you know what you're working with and you can just fly through them so the top bell housing bolts are off the ground straps off all the grounds are off the engine intakes off um, basically everything is off the engine except for the stuff on the bottom because like I said we don't have a jack right now so tomorrow or so we'll get this thing in the air pull the starter the last couple bell housing bolts and the torque converter bolts and the exhaust and it's finally ready to come back out. So, didn't take long at all to get all of our work undone. Now, let's spin the truck around and get our new engine out. Well, there you have it. Try number two is unloaded in the shop and ready to go in. And uh, hopefully it doesn't take too much longer to get all this fun stuff swapped out. Huge shout out to LKQ for taking care of all of this, overnighting me a new engine and uh, really just solving the problem here. All we have to do is swap out a bunch of bolts. So. We'll get this done as quickly as possible and get this thing back on the road. It should be, well, perfect after this. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. Watch JRGraw.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. Really didn't take us too long, did it? No. We're <laughs> Escalate swapping experts here. Soon we'll have it down to one hour, in and out. <laughs> oh, well, never again, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, soon. Wait, evaporator, condenser. Oh, good.